With all their experience in the rideshare industry, you might expect Uber to win the race to launch the world's first autonomous vehicle. But Google's parent company, Alphabet, and its Waymo team seem to have pipped them at the post. But what's the story behind Waymo, and can you really get a driverless taxi today? Here's how it happened. Google's idea to develop a self-driving car began back in 2009 at the Google X Lab, the company's arm for groundbreaking new technologies. The project took the working name Chauffeur and was led by Sebastian Thrun, former director of the Stanford Artificial Intelligence Laboratory, and Anthony Lewandowski, founder of 510 Systems. Stanford's digital mapping tool, ViewTool, had been acquired by Google two years earlier to advance its Street View technology, while 510 Systems provided their Topcon boxes to a fleet of 100 Toyota Priuses as the hardware for the mapping project. Using some of Google's technology, Lewandowski built the world's first fully autonomous vehicle, a pizza delivery car for a Discovery Channel show called Prototype This. The vehicle was referred to as the Prebot, and travelled through several streets in San Francisco and even across the Bay Bridge, all without a driver at the wheel. The global press coverage was all Google needed to see to confirm the company's interest in pursuing their own invention. After nearly two years of total secrecy, Thrun revealed the existence of Google's project in a blog post, and set out his mission to reduce the 1.2 million lives lost to road accidents every year, and help create the new highway trains of tomorrow. In 2012, Las Vegas DMV carried out the first ever self-driving car test, which chauffeur passed with Lewandowski in the passenger seat, consequently receiving the first ever driver's license to a car, not to a driver. Two years later, the first specially designed driverless car was unveiled, entitled Firefly. Unlike previous prototypes that were reconfigured versions of mass market models like the Prius and a Lexus SUV, the Firefly had no steering wheel or pedals and wasn't designed to be released in dealerships. Its main purpose was a platform for further tweaking and experimentation. The Firefly soon completed its first journey through the streets of Austin, Texas. The only passenger was a friend of the chief engineer, a man called Steve Mahan, who is registered legally blind. Lewandowski departed the project completely in 2015, explaining that he left because he was eager to commercialize a self-driving vehicle as quickly as possible. He soon founded Otto, a startup designed to fit trucks with self-driving apparatus, bringing 11 Google employees with him and was quickly acquired by Uber. His replacement as CEO was John Krafchik, a former Hyundai executive and president of retail site True Car, with the appointment seen as a major statement by Google of one day commercializing the concept. The following year, Google struck a partnership with Fiat Chrysler, agreeing for their driverless technology to be integrated into 100 Chrysler Pacifica minivans as part of the department's research and development process. The suggestions were that the chauffeur project was beginning to manoeuvre itself into a mass transportation model, and that Thrun's ambitions of a new superhighway might be closer than everyone first thought. By the end of the year, it was revealed that Chauffeur had changed its name to Waymo, taken from the team's mission, a new way forward in mobility. Waymo would now be considered as an independent company within the Google family, having graduated from the X laboratory. Kraftchik used the press conference to announce that they were now absolutely all in, 100% on fully driverless solutions, and that his team had covered over 1 billion simulation miles in their testing. Under its new label, Waymo stated that they were not interested in building a concept car. They wanted a vehicle that could make a tangible impact on the transportation industry. One of Waymo's first actions was the filing of a lawsuit against Uber in 2017, claiming that Lewandowski had stolen 9.7 gigabytes of trade secrets before his departure, mostly surrounding their LiDAR sensor technology. The case was settled with Uber agreeing to give Waymo 0.34% of Uber's stock and ceasing use of the stolen technology. For his involvement in the crime, Lewandowski pleaded guilty to stealing trade secrets from Google, for which he was sentenced to 18 months in prison, where he currently resides. The last couple of years have seen Waymo on a steep upward trajectory. Their early rider program was launched in Phoenix, Arizona in 2017, operating their fleet of Chrysler Pacificas to transport their exclusive group of 400 testers across the city. Waymo has formed commercial partnerships with the likes of Volvo, Renault and Nissan, and even luxury manufacturer Jaguar Land Rover, to ensure all bases are covered once the technology goes mainstream. Waymo has also experimented with the transport of goods in large quantities, branding the service as Waymo Via. 
The company currently employs 13 Peterbilt trucks across California and Arizona, with plans to expand into more neighboring states very soon. To make a distinction between the two features, Waymo's ride-sharing service has since been streamlined and renamed Waymo One. The world's first self-driving ride-hailing service is in the process of being rolled out in the Phoenix East Valley as we speak. The race is on to see if the likes of Uber and Lyft can keep up with the Alphabet project. Let us know your thoughts on driverless vehicles and whether you'd be happy taking a ride with Waymo. That's how it happened, and thanks for watching.